Okay, we're going to get right to it. So we're going to be looking at factoring. Now what I want you to keep in mind that with factoring what we're really doing is we're dividing we are dividing. So if I was to factor, if I have the number 10, okay, if I was to factor out a 2, what would the other factor be? So we divide. 10 divided by 2 is 5. So 2 and 5 are factors of 10. Okay? So let's take a look at this type of problem. There's many different types. And it takes some time to get used to the different types. <clears throat> so what you need to look for is a greatest common factor. And you learn about factors back in the sixth grade, maybe the seventh grade. Um, so we're going to look at the three and the six. Okay. Is there a number that goes into both of them evenly? That's right, 3 does. So 3 is going to be a factor. Now, when it comes to letters, you ask yourself, what's the most number of x's that I can take away from both of these? So we have x squared. x squared is x times x. So that means we have two x's here. x is just one x. So what's the most number of x's I can take away from both? One x. So I'm going to take away one x. Okay, so dividing. 3 divided by 3? 1. I took away an x from an x squared, leaving me with x bring down the plus, back to division. 6 divided by 3, 2. And if I take an x away from an x, that leaves me with no x's. And that's your factors. Okay? 3x is one of the factors. x plus 2 is the other factor. Okay, let's take a look at number 2. So let's start with the numbers. What can we factor out of both of these? In other words, what number goes into both of those evenly? Okay, I think I, 5 sounds good. Anything bigger? Nope. Write it down. What's the most number of y's I can take away from both of these? Here we have three of them, y times y times y. And here we have two of them y times y. That's right, we can take two y's. That's the most you can take away from each because you can't take three away from two. You only have two of them here. So dividing, taking away, bring down the minus, dividing, taking away. Back to Algebra 1. When you divide like bases, I want you to remember the rule. You subtract exponents. You subtract exponents. So this would be x squared. So when we divide here, we're subtracting exponents. 3 minus 2 is 1. 2 minus 2 is 0. It's gone. Okay, let's take a look at number 3. Now, notice it begins with a negative. Notice what it says up here. If the first term is negative, factor out a negative 1. Well, what does factoring mean again? That's right. It means to divide. So we're going to write down the negative 1. All right, so divide. Negative 6 divided by negative 1. Negative divided by a negative is a positive. So we're going to have 4x squared 
minus 8. Remember, we're dividing. Okay, now let's get down to business. What can I take out of 6, 4, and 8? What number goes into all of those evenly? Looks like 2. Okay, and what's the most number of x's I could take out of each of these? Well, this one doesn't have any x's. So that means I can't take out any x's. Because if I was going to factor um, an x out of here, I'd have to be able to take it out of all three. So that's it. So let's divide. Divide. Bring down the x cubed. Divide. Bring down the x squared. Divide. And then that's going to be your answer. All right, you go ahead and try number four. All right, here's another special type of factoring. It's called the difference of squares. Remember what squares are. Perfect squares. One is a perfect square. Four is a perfect square. Nine, 16, 25, those are all perfect squares and so on. Why? Because one times one is one. 2 times 2 is 4, 3 times 3 is 9, and so on. And why do we call them squares? Because this, would re this represents uh, the area of a 1 by 1 square. This represents the area of a 2 by 2 square. This represents the area of a 3 by 3 square. Remember squares, all sides are the same. So this represents the area, these represents the sides, and it makes a perfect square. Okay, so also let's just talk about this. x squared is a perfect square because x times x is x squared. That would give us a square that's x by x for sides. x to the fourth is a perfect square because x squared times x squared is x to the fourth. Remember when multiplying you add the exponents. So this would be a square that's x squared by x squared gives us an area of x to the fourth. Okay, x to the sixth is a perfect square because x cubed times x cubed, 3 plus 3 is 6. So that would be a perfect square with an area of x to the 6 with sides of x cubed and x cubed. All right, notice the pattern. Perfect squares are what? They have exponents that are what? Can you figure it out? What's the pattern? And can you give me an example of a perfect square? Okay, back to the problem. So we know that x squared is a perfect square. So x times x on the front. 9 is a perfect square. That would be 3 times 3 on the back. And when it's a difference, the difference means that one's going to be plus and one's going to be minus. Now let's take a look at this. Let's FOIL it. x times x, first terms. Okay. Outer terms. Inner terms last terms. Okay, 
those cancel. Oops, made a mistake. Sorry about that. 3 times negative 3 is negative 9. So that leaves us with x squared minus 9, which is what we have here. So these are the factors of x squared minus 9. Okay? Let's look at number 6. Okay, starting off with the 4. It's 2 times 2. Perfect square. X squared, we know that's x times x. Y squared, y times y. And then 1 is going to be plus, 1 is going to be minus. It doesn't matter which way you put it. And there you have it. Easy. But you got to be able to recognize it. you got to be able to recognize it. Look at 8. Are these perfect squares? 5? Can you think of a number times itself that gives you 5? I can't either. Can you think of a number that goes into 5 and 12 evenly? Nope, me either. So guess what? This is a prime number. Actually, we won't call it a number. We'll just call it prime. Okay? We're just going to call it prime. Remember, prime numbers are numbers that are only divisible by 1 and itself. For example, prime numbers are like 11. The only factors of 11 are 1 times 11. Uh, 17. 1 times 17. There is a lot of prime numbers. And there are prime expressions as well. When you can't factor it, it's going to be prime. So I want you to try number 7. Okay. Notice number 9. What do you notice? Well, I hope that you notice that it's not a difference of two squares. Yeah, that's a perfect square. Yes, that's a perfect square. But it's not a difference. It's the sum of two squares. And this cannot be factored. So this is prime. It has to be the difference. Remember the word difference means to subtract. All right, last one on this page. Breaking it up into two parts. 169 breaks up to 13 and 13. X squared breaks up to X and X. 100? Hmm. 10 times 10. You really thought I had to think about that, didn't you? Ha. Huh. And just so you know, order doesn't matter on the plus and the minus. I'm going to go ahead and put the minus first and the plus second. And there you have it. There's your factors. Pretty cool, huh? Now, on the back, I think we will wait on this. We're at about, what, almost 14 minutes. And so we're going to wait on this. Uh, maybe I'll go over it in class, or maybe I'll make another video. We'll see. Hope you guys are having a good night. Thanks for watching my video.